Welcome back, everyone. Uh, in the previous video, we talked about how we can adapt area under the curve problems for parametric curves, and now how this really seems like it's just a special type of trigonometric substitution or other types of substitutions. Uh, we want to do a similar thing for arc length. And so remember from arc length we saw before that arc length is s is equal to the integral of ds, not a dx there, sorry about that. Uh, in which case, ds, as we, soon, we learned before from the, from the Pythagorean equation, ds is equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. And so when we dealt with this in the case of Cartesian functions, we learned that if we factored out the dx squared or the dy squared, we could get the following situations. Uh, I guess I can just put it right here. This could be written as the square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared dx, or we could write this as the integral from the square root of dx over dy squared plus 1 dy, like so. So by factoring out the differentials dx squared or dy squared, we could adapt this so we could integrate with respect to x or with respect to y. Now, if we're in the parametric setting, we want to integrate with respect to dt, right? We want to integrate with respect to t. And so the idea is, can we take this, this expression and factor out the dt? Well, if you do that, when you factor out dt squared away from, I guess we should factor out a dt squared, we're going to factor that away from the dx squared, in which case we're going to get dx over dt squared. And then you're going to factor that away from the dy squared, so you get a dy over dt squared. And then you take the square root of dt squared, you get a dt. So ds can also be adapted for this parametric setting in a very, very simple way. It's really, really nice. And so let's apply this to some parametric curves we've seen before. Take the parameterization of the circle we've seen many times. X equals R cosine theta. Y equals R sine theta. Let's adapt, the, let's adapt it to the setting. So the arc length S, we're gonna integrate one complete cycle. So zero to two pi, um, that's our parameter there theta. Uh, and so we're supposed to take the square root of dt. So we're going to take the square root of the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of y squared. And so if we do this, the derivative of x squared, we're going to get a negative r sine theta. We took the derivative of r cosine. But we also want to take the derivative of r sine with respect to theta. And so we're going to get r cosine theta squared. And so trying to simplify this thing, uh, we're going to end up with 0 to 2 pi. Inside the square root, we're going to get r squared sine squared theta plus r squared cosine squared theta. Take the square root dt. Uh, so we can factor out the r squared. And so then you're going to get a sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. This is inside the square root. We're integrating from 0 to 2 pi dt. And sine squared, sine squared plus cosine squared, we've seen that before. We know what that is. That's equal to 3. Oh, I'm just kidding. That's equal to a 1, right? And so you're going to get the integral from 0 to 2 pi. You get the square root of r squared dt. That'll just become the r squared. The square root of r squared will just become an r. And so you integrate with respect to t, you're going to get rt from 0 to 2 pi. And so that's going to equal 2 pi r, the usual formula for there's the circumference of a circle. And we did this example previously when we did arc length. We calculated the circumference of a circle. We did that in Cartesian coordinates. This is basically the same thing. It's just in Cartesian coordinates, because you have to take the you have to take an integral of the square root in it, that leads itself very naturally to a trigonometric substitution. And that trigonometric substitution, without realizing it, is a parameterization. Every trig sub that we have done in this series is a special type of parameterization. You're parameterizing a function using trigonometric functions like we've seen many times in this chapter already. Um, let's look at another function we, we know very well, the cycloid. We could keep on seeing it. It has a very nice trigonometric parameterization. The x coordinate is given as r times theta minus sine of theta. Y is given as r times 1 minus cosine theta. Can we find the length of a single arch of a cycloid, which would be this arch right here? So one arch will correspond to theta will range from 0 to 2 pi. And so by the formula, 
the arc length s will equal 0 to 2 pi, we have to take the square root of, well, we're going to take the derivative of x with respect to theta. That's going to be r times 1 minus cosine theta. That's squared. We add to it the derivative of y, which is going to be r times sine theta squared d theta. And so multiplying out the things inside the square root, we're going to end up with an r squared times 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. And then we're also going to get an r squared r squared times sine squared theta. This all sits inside the square root d theta. So some observations to make here. Notice that everything is divisible by r squared. We can factor that out and then take the square root of r squared. That's going to give us an r that sits in front of this thing. r times the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Then we're going to get the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. This one we know and love. Cosine squared plus sine squared, of course, is equal to 1. So this right here is just equal to 1, which we can combine this 1 with the other 1. Oh, there should be a 2 right there. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. And so notice now we have a 2. Well, I'll write it out. We then have r integral from 0 to 2 pi. We're going to have the square root of 2 minus 2 cosine theta d theta. So there's a factor of 2 which we can factor out from both of these things. And since it's inside of square root, it will actually be a square root of 2. So factoring that out, we get r times the square root of 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, square root of 1 minus cosine theta d theta. Uh, like so. And so now we have to deal with this one, the square root of 1 minus cosine. Uh, there's a couple ways one could try to handle that. It turns out the half angle identity is going to be a saving grace in this situation. Because what we can do is we can actually replace, I mean, because from what we've seen before, we've been using a lot the following identity. 1 half, 1 minus cosine of 2 theta equals sine squared theta. We use this all the time. This is the so-called half angle identity. Now, if we make a slight modification, if we cut the angle in half, we get theta. That'll cut this angle in half. So we get theta over 2, which is why it's usually called the half angle identity. And if we times both sides by 2, we end up with the following. 1 minus cosine is equal to 2 sine squared theta over 2. And so if you make that substitution in right here, you get a very nice observation, in which case you're going to end up with r root 2 times integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 2 times sine squared theta over 2, d theta. And so this is going to give you another square root of 2, which we'll combine with this square root of 2 just to give you a genuine 2. So we get 2r integral from 0 to 2 pi. And then you take the square root of the sine squared, you're going to get sine of theta over 2, d theta. And that's a pretty nice integral to handle. I think I can handle that one. Antiderivative of sine, right? You're going to get a negative cosine of pi over 2, but we have to divide by that. Uh, the period change, so we actually get negative 2 cosine of pi halves. So we go from 0 to pi halves right there. And so plugging these things in, you're going to get a negative 4r times. When you plug in pi halves, sorry, if you plug in 2 pi into the theta over 2, you'll just get a pi. Cosine of pi is a negative 1, right? And then you're going to subtract from it when you plug in 0. Cosine of 0 is a 1. So we're going to get a negative 2 right there, and so we end up with 8r. And this gives us the circumference of one arch of our cycloid. And this one I always find really fascinating, right? We've now discovered that the arc length of this arch right here is, is 8r. 
it does depend on the radius of the circle. It's eight times the radius or four times the diameter of the cartwheel, if you prefer. It doesn't involve pi whatsoever. It seems kind of weird that things that are round need to have a pi in it, but the circumference is going to just be um, eight times the radius here. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, and we can find out arc length of other parametric curves in a very similar manner. We just have to adapt the ds so that it uh, integrates with respect to our parameter and we're good to go.